start up a fresh week. Put last week behind me. And um, take my revenge. So what we're going to talk about here this week is free rising snakehead. This is the reason how I ended up in Malaysia in the first place. And unlike there, where the fly landed just as the fish was coming up, which is highly unusual. Now we've got a an interested fish, but actually he doesn't eat. Sometimes he eat. If they chase it, a number of them will eat, but it's less than half. The real goal here is to wait for him to come up, take his mouth full of air, and then lead the fish by about half to one meter. If you're too too slow, or if you're too far away, you tend to get a chase. If you're behind the fish, you spook the fish. Make sure you fish it right to the boat. Or so that, you know, if, there's, if the shot went in, the fish could be underneath it and you just can't quite see in this, in this visibility of water. There's probably about eight or ten fish in this, in this little bay when I'm working. Well, they don't always do what you want. But life's still pretty damned awesome. Catch or even get the cameras rolling. Mornings are like that. Beautiful fish. Oops. <laughs> it's taken a long time. Hey, it wants to go. There you go. Thank you. Oh. It's been a long time coming. I think I've lost three to get to that one. <sighs> He's back. I think it's going to get easier from now on. Back to the boat and I pick up Ashley and we find a herd of wild elephants. Always makes the day a bit more interesting. And now we're back on the free risers. I found a whole bunch of free risers in this bay here and uh, I really want to set about them. This is about line management, always being ready for the quick shot, having a short line ready to go. Come here. You have to stick it to them. That means a straight rod pull them backwards. Oh! What? Come off. Why did that come off? Broke me, I think. God, I thought I had him. See how that cut's gone. I reckon it might have bitten through the 
bitten through the bloody knot there. Hmm. Oh. Can you show me the thing? <laughs> yeah, that was a good look. So a lot of people do ask about how I'm fighting these fish and do comment on it. And the easiest way is for you to practice it. Go and get a spring balance and, and try to apply as much force as you can to the tippet end uh, through rod angles and you'll find the best angles to point straight at them. We're not trying to protect the tippet here, we're trying to stop these fish from running. <clears throat> Oh yeah, all right. Okay. And if you can get that rod butt tucked under the forearm like that, it takes a lot of pressure off the wrist. Riser. Oh, it's nice, nice looking fish. Look at that. Yeah! Quick, quick. There we go. That's the free riser. Oh. That's not bad, is it? One in, one broken, one off, one missed. All about the shot, eh? Now I've changed that wire. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, might all be focused in. Look at that. What a great photo that's going to be. few shots of babies. Oh, fucking good shot too. That. Fucking fish didn't eat, but fuck me, what a shot. What a shot. Yeah, right. Here we go again. Man, fuck me, that was a good, good, good shot. I thought that was in. Well, it wasn't. Yeah, so we're back on the free risers now. First thing you have to do is clear your line. Get the line out. You can't just pull the line off the reel, otherwise it's going to be upside down. So, the, so get the line out, position the boat while we're positioning the boat and uh, get organized, get ready for the shot. Always make sure you've got slightly more line than you need. There's nothing worse than finding out you haven't got enough line when you've got to make the shot. Awesome shot coming up. For me, it's all about making these shots. It did neat, but actually, that didn't really matter. I 
Another fish rising at the top there. Driving the boat with my feet. If you can drive a car, you can drive a boat. That cast was a little bit short and that's why I've got the chase here and not the eat. And uh, took it right to the boat but it was the poor cast that was a the problem there. That wasn't too bad actually, I'm surprised that fish didn't stick. Yeah, okay, so now we're in. This is more like it. Yeah, once again, keep this rod low. Point it at them. I, I teach try to pull their face off. Not literally. But it's not just about pulling them, it's not about pulling them, it's about stopping them. When they're doing what you want, take the pressure off. You're playing the fish, we're fighting the fish, but we're playing the fish. Oops. And the great thing about these fish is they always swim into the net. Yes! <laughs> Let's get this one running as well, hey? Get a bit of a close up. Alrighty. Got lovely colours on this, man. Absolute beautiful. There we go. Look at that. Look at the colours, the purples and the greens, man. Oh man, well that was a nice moment. So as you can see with this free rising stuff, we're trying to get pretty close to them. We can, we can often get within 30 to 50 feet much over that and it's usually just better to get a bit closer. I've certainly taken shots at it, like 20 meters or so, but generally by the time the fly gets here the fish is gone. So you're better off just to close the gap. The idea is to try to get in that area, not to be too close. Keep a fairly short line and an accurate cast. And I think key really is to take your time. Even though there's only one or one and a half seconds to do it, you have to have that little fraction of, hes hes we'll call it hesitation, just a 
sighting in, just to working out where you want to put your fly, checking the direction of the fish, and then making the shot. Don't make the shot before you know where you're going to put the fly. You've got to work out where to put the fly, and that just takes be a hundredth of a second, but it's it's, it's got to be there, otherwise your shot won't go in. But, um, but it's my favourite way of fishing for snaking. Right now, there's, there's kind of like three elements to me being here. One is my own personal fishing. Which seems to be about all I'm doing at the moment because of the COVID restrictions. The other is I'm a, I host trips here, I guide, I take people fishing, I teach fly fishing, I teach people how to do this. They can eventually come and rent their own boat. I'll look after them. So I have a regular bunch of clients who come over usually for five days to a week. Some come, one comes three times a year. Most of the others come once a year. Um, and that's fantastic. I really enjoy it. I kind of feel that I'm fishing through them. And it's great to see how they improve and they become much better casters because of it. And uh, some of the guys here, when they come on the Arctic they're gonna catch fish, they're very good. And then the third thing I do is I have friends, because I've been travelling around the world for about most of my life. So as you can imagine, I've picked up a lot of friends and I owe a lot of favours around the world. So a lot of my good friends come over anywhere between usually, well, one week is short, but usually two weeks to a month. I'm going to boat for them and they can go, I, I show them the ropes and then off they go. And I come up there and just make sure they survive. But that's always good. I haven't had any of that for about 18 months now. Hopefully next year it all kicks in again. This area here, it's a, this is going to be a wonderful area. There's a set of stumps here where the water level is right, right area. Just through here. And all the way down this, all the way down this bank here, free rises. 